in this segment, we will look at uh, use of full bridge converters in isolated switch mode power supplies. And very briefly, we will look also look at half bridge and push pull. So uh, the structure of these uh, switch mode power supplies, uh, uh, we have uh, input usually coming from the utility. Uh, this could be a diode rectifier bridge. Uh, quite often, it's the power fraction, power factor corrected uh, circuit, and uh, it produces a DC voltage here. And then we chop up this DC voltage, pass it through a high frequency transformer, which is rectified, and there's a filter, and we get this output voltage here. And this uh, leads us to an isolation between the input stage and the output stage. And this in the feedback controller, uh, we should also have electrical isolation of some form here. So uh, the classification is uh, flyback converters based on buck boost, and then forward converters based on a buck. But uh, in this uh, segment, we will look at full bridge and half bridge which are derived based on this, uh, and, and also we'll look at push-pull, uh, derived based on this buck converter principle here. So let's get started. So full bridge structure uh, looks like this here, where uh, we have uh, four transistors, and uh, uh, we are trying to apply a voltage V1 across the input side uh, winding, uh, which uh, during this uh, time period is equal to Vn, and uh, then it goes z to zero. And then we, for the same interval here, uh, we apply a minus Vn, and then zero again here. And that completes the switching time period here. So we are applying a high frequency AC voltage, and by adjusting these uh, zero intervals, we can provide uh, regulation of the output voltage, and uh, Maybe I should put a bar over here. Uh, so, uh, so this zero, not bar, but uh, prime. So uh, there are two ways to introduce this zero interval in this voltage V1 that gets applied. One is uh, pulse width modulation, where all four switches are turned off during the interval when we want zero voltage to be applied. And the other is called phase shift modulation, PSM, uh, where uh, all these transistors are operated with 50% uh, uh, duty ratio. And uh, the voltage that is produced at, let's say, at this point A, with respect to arbitrarily, let's say this is ground over here. And so voltage produced at A compared to the voltage produced at B, uh, these two are phase, these are rectangular waveforms, but uh, we can uh, sh phase shift them and introduce this uh, zero interval. So we'll see this uh, in another segment. But for now, we'll not talk about this, just uh, PWM. <clears throat> so let's see how, how these work. Uh, first of all, uh, in order to provide the uh, switching signals to these transistors, let's say we have a ramp voltage uh, and uh, we are comparing it with this control voltage here. So, uh, you know, this would produce uh, switching signals to T1 and T2. Let's call it 1 and 2 over here. And uh, so those two are turned on. And uh, turn. And then during this interval, all four transistors are off. Now in the next uh, cycle uh, of this ramp voltage, uh, T3 and T4 are turned on, okay, as shown here. And then again, all are turned off. So this makes up one switching time period over here, right here, okay. So how does this circuit work? And that, that is also indicated in this circuit here, to T1 and T2 uh, during this interval, to T3 and T4 during this interval, and the rest of the time here and here, uh, all four transistors are, are turned off here. <coughs> so <coughs> uh, let's say that T1 and T2 are on. <coughs> so that is causing this uh, diode D1 here to get reverse uh, to fo get forward biased. This uh, diode D, this one D2 here gets uh, reverse biased over here, and we are applying uh, across 
these two terminals, this voltage VA, which is equal to VN coming in times the turns ratio here. So we are applying this voltage to VA. So, so that's what is happening when T1 and T2 are on. But now let's say that we turn all four transistors off. So what's going to happen to this inductor current IL? In that case, it splits equally between these two uh, uh, secondaries, if you can call it that. So what's going to happen is that uh, IL over two would flow through this diode in the, in the direction shown, and IL two would flow through here, and this V sub A will turn out to be zero. So let's, uh, let's take a, uh, so, uh, so if that happens, uh, and maybe we, uh, we can uh, describe this a little more in detail here, uh, we can see that uh, that is going to happen is uh, because uh, when both of these uh, uh, diodes are conducting, uh, if you apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop here, in this loop, you'll see that uh, V2 uh, plus V2 prime they sum to zero, and uh, V2 is equal to V2 prime. So that is only uh, these two equations simultaneously are uh, can only be valid if each one of them is zero. Okay, so that if both of these are zero, then this V sub A becomes zero as well. So th that is uh, something what uh, we needed as shown here, that when T1 and T2 are on, we have this V1 equal to Vn here, uh, and when all transistors are off, zero, and then when uh, T3 and T4 are on, this is equal to minus Vn over here, and then zero over here. Uh, so based on this uh, V1, uh, Va uh, would look, uh, you know, this part is uh, uh, rectified, so it becomes positive again. So we get, uh, you know, N2 over N1 times Vn, uh, because of the ta uh, transformer turns ratio, and similarly, the same quantity appears over here, and uh, the average of VA is equal to the output voltage because in steady state, the average inductor voltage is zero. So from here, we get the turns ratio to look like this. Once again, since it's derived from Buck, uh, the duty ratio in continuous conduction mode when IL is flowing continuously uh, is equal to V, V0 over Vn is equal to this duty ratio. In addition, we have this turns ratio over here. So we can uh, analyze this uh, circuit uh, and some numerical example, uh, numerical values are shown here where 48 volts uh, uh, are being applied here. And you can see what the waveform of uh, uh, Va looks like uh, given certain turns ratio. 8 volts here, 0 volts here, and the average is uh, then 5 volts over here is average, and uh, IL is uh, changing from this value to this value corresponding to that uh, I1, uh, which is flowing through this uh, input side uh, transform winding, uh, goes from here to here, and then it's 0 when all four transistors are off. And uh, this IN then, of course, then is uh, changing from here to here, zero, and then again flowing in the positive sense over here. So we can uh, analyze uh, all these waveforms. We can, of course, simulate the circuit using piece spice as done here. And uh, just the, the output, input voltage rather, is shown here. There are some spikes due to the leakage, but otherwise uh, it's the waveform that we have seen earlier here. So uh, in, you know, in a full bridge converter, we have four transistors, but it is possible to have two capacitors here across which we can split this input voltage into two halves. And uh, using this midpoint, uh, we can get by with uh, two transistors. So it's the, the operation here is very similar. Uh, you know, for a certain period, T1 is on, then both the switch, both the transistors are off, then T2 is on, then both the transistors are off. So that makes up one switching time period, okay? And uh, <coughs> uh, the other possibility here is uh, push-pull converter. 
where uh, we have two transistors and two diodes as shown here. And when we turned one of the transistors on, for example, here, uh, one of the diodes on the secondary side becomes uh, forward biased, conducts the output current. And when we turn off both the transistors, then uh, the, this current IL uh, free wheels through these two output diodes. And uh, so that's one half the time period and the other half then is similar. So uh, that uh, we come to the uh, conclusion of this segment where we have seen switch mode DC power supplies made up of full bridge, half bridge, and push-pull converters.